Hello, friends and family of YouTube. Well, before we get to the uh, camper slash RV of the day, I did want to remind you that I do have another channel, and uh, that's where I show a little bit of my day-to-day -day life style on there and uh, some of my vlog stuff, and that is called Dave and Muppy. If you look down below in the uh, show more area of the uh, video, you'll see down there where it gives you a link to go to the channel. Again, that's called Dave and Muppy. Muppy is my little dog, so uh, man, I'd love to have y'all come join me on the other channel. But for today, I have a uh, 279 RBC that I wanna take you and uh, show you around that thing, and I think you'll enjoy it. Y'all let me know down in the comments below what you think about this particular unit, what you'd like to see different on there, or like to see more of. So uh, anyway, Check out this camper of the day. And if this is the first time for you to watch Dave's RV channel, I do not work for the company that makes these or sells these. I'm just showing you this camper just the same as you would see it yourself. I don't care if you buy one or not. Right up here, you've got a hookup for a backup camera. The camera is not in there, but they've already got it pre-wired for you. And they got a curved top on this thing to help the water run off. Also got a good ladder system where you can get up there and check it out. I'm over at Northgate RV, which is right outside Ringgold, Georgia, close to uh, Chattanooga. And they've got a outside shower hook up there, city water connection, flush tank. Also got you some solar hook up there as well. And let me uh, walk around down here at the back and bottom side got four corner jacks so that as you are sitting at the campground it will give you a good stable sitting and they've got both your black and gray tank hook up there in the same location i would like to see that turned out or up right now that is turned downward to me that makes it just a little bit uh too close to the ground that is about a foot and a half off of the ground but hey any any distance more off the ground is even better does have a good size slide out on here that's probably right at three foot maybe 40 inches and you can see the uh, track system that's going on there and this is a dual axle with aluminum rims and let me go around the front side here got a good size pass-through storage and also got enough area that you can put uh, two batteries on here also uh, dual uh, propane tank and also has a an electric tongue jack and coming around to the other side we've got got a good size awning going on here as well three-step entry oh and let me show you this this little i opened this door up and i thought man there's gonna be a kitchenette out here nope so i think what this is for is for you to put a tv in here because the tv hookups are right there and with that door, that would help protect your TV if you did put one in there. So, uh, man, I tell you what, let me take you inside this unit. This is very impressive. Again, this is a 279 RBC. And there is the door that I just came into. That's also an exit. Notice the little sticker up there. So uh, right now we are facing the front of the camper. And before, uh, before I finish this video, I will give you a layout of the land. I will show you a, an angle that was, you can see the front to back of this camper all in one shot. I know right now I'm showing you some close-up angles, but that's uh, my arms are only so long. You've got an area here where you can hang you some clothing or you could use this as a pantry as well because this is right beside the kitchen. I've also got a little storage up there as well and that is about 12 to 14 inches deep. You got one on both sides of this entryway leading into the bedroom. Now I do want to point out that you do have the heating duct into the floor and the air conditioning duct is into the ceiling. You do have storage on both sides of the bed that's uh, also got a mirror on it as well and you've got windows on both sides of the bed got a little bit of storage above the bed also with those two doors and those are strut assist to help you open those by one hand also have a vent up there as well 
that you can open up and kind of let some fresh air flow through. And let me show you that under the bed, there is plenty of storage down there as well. And that is also strut assist. And your TV, as you're in the bedroom, the TV will mount right here. And uh, you can put a swivel on it and that way you would have a good uh, angle to look at it from the bed. And these doors are the pocket size type doors. You undo the strap there and the doors will just slide back and forth. So let me take you into the living area. All right, you can see that it's got a dinette on here and also a, a couch. Something I wanna point out that I have not talked about before. Uh, if you've seen a video that I did where I ordered a, uh, a mattress, personal size mattress for my, my RV, we all know that these dinette cushions are horrible. I do not know if the company that made my mattress, if they can make these or not, but if they can, I am telling you that would be the way to go. Down in the, my description below, you will see uh, in the show more area, there is a company called Tochta, T-O-C-H-T-A, and they make RV cushions, uh, mattresses. But I would like to check with them and see if they can make cushions for dinettes. If they could, I know a lot of people would love to have that. Anyway, you've got storage down below uh, the... Uh, the dinette as well, and I don't think I talked about it, that the dinette can break down and make into a, uh, a little bed system as well. And right here, you've got uh, got a good size setup. And I sat in this, and this was very comfortable. I do like that. And it's got a great angle going to the TV right here from the uh, from this theater type seating and what I do like is of course this TV does have a swivel mount but what's also good about that is you have a lot of storage behind this TV man that sets back about 30 inches deep so you could swivel this TV out and away and be able to put maybe some off-season clothing or something like that back there or if you wanted to hide some of the fun stuff from the kids that'd probably be a good place to hide it or that maybe the kids will hide their fun stuff from you back there. All right, you got plenty of storage down below and you've got some storage up here as well. And again, that sets back about 30 inches, the same as this storage behind the TV. And it has an ever chill refrigerator freezer combo. And as I stated in a previous video, I am not familiar with Everchill. If you're watching this video and you have an Everchill refrigerator freezer in your RV, please let me know how you like it. I had a Dometic in my uh, camper and uh, I was not happy with it whatsoever. So I like to know the good and bad of all of these so that I can share the information with you. And I have to get a lot of my information from viewers. So if y'all would let me know, let everybody know what you think about the Everchill refrigerator freezer combo. And right over the uh, kitchen area, you do have a window that'll give you some lighting and help you decorate your food, get it all fixed up. There's not a whole lot of countertop space on the front end, but at least there is some on the back. And they did give you an outlet right up there to hook your goods up into like your coffee maker that sort of thing got a three burner cooktop and also got a small oven here that'll be good for tv dinners some of that kind of frozen food stuff also got storage down below of the sink there is your sink it is a stainless top and got a little bit of storage down here below I love that they did a maple bottom, even though when you get everything, I'm sorry, this is maple on the sides. This is like a walnut. But what I like about the fact that they did that is even though when you get all your crap in here, you'll never see the bottom again. But that being walnut, you can see that it matches the rest of that cabinetry. That is very impressive to me that they took the time and effort to do that, just to match that up never seen that in an rv before and i didn't show you earlier but here is your station where you turn on and your uh, water pump your uh, your awnings your slide out that sort of thing 
And I tell you what, I'll give you a little sneak peek of the layout of the land right here as we're heading to the bathroom. And this is a plastic toilet. It is not a uh, porcelain, but you could always upgrade if you wanted to. And it's got a shower, corner shower unit with the sliding doors and the little rubber thing right there so that you can lock those doors and keep them in place as you're moving in transit down the road. Shower head has a on and off switch on here. That's what this is right here. That'll help you save water. While you're lathering up, you turn off your water. And that's where you stick your head to give you a little extra, extra height. I am six foot one and that little space up there does come in handy. This is not a movable door. This is just a mirror that is mounted onto the wall. You've got a um, small sink here, which is good enough size to wash your hands. And you've got plenty of storage space down here below. They even gave you a couple of little baskets. And let me show you this. Give you a good corner unit too. Plenty of storage in this entire RV. Now, I am about to show you something that is going to make a lot of people happy look at what we got going on in here you've got a bar to hang you some clothes right there and right there we're not done look at this you've got an area to hang you some clothes up here some folded clothes and down below look at this Look how big. This is about 30 inches across this way, and it's about 12 to 14, probably 14 inches this way. That is really neat. This whole floor space area, you've got about uh, three foot across here with about four foot going that way. And I was asking a buddy of mine, Virgil, he's here with me today. I was asking him, could you turn this into like a little baby area? Like if you had a baby and you wanted to put it in a bassinet or whatever that thing's called. Look here, you stick that baby in there when it started crying. Boom, you close that door, now you don't hear it because you got this door too. So you keep that door closed and then look at here. You close that door. You got three doors to close and you won't ever hear that baby screaming no more. All right, so I'm showing you a little layout of the land. Look at that. That's the impressive shot right there to me. I really like this. I have never seen Intrepid units before today. So uh, I've been, uh, been pretty impressed with them. Quality of them seems pretty good from what I can tell. And uh, I'm just liking the, the color scheme, color palette that they used. I'm also liking the, uh, the way that they did that separation of that, that bedroom area. I love that. All right, so let me, and we're facing towards the front right now. So as I go all the way to the front, and again, imagine if you was to close these doors right here and you got that baby back there. Yep, you won't hear that thing crying. Mm -mm. I don't have kids, folks, so I'm just joking. I've never had kids. I'm, I'm a very lucky man. All right, so that's the layout of the land towards the back of the camper. And uh, you could up, upsize that TV. If you did not want to get to that storage behind the TV, you could go with a much, much larger TV. I mean, a whole lot larger, probably a 55 inch. And I'm sure you're wondering if the slide was closed, would you be able to get to the bathroom? If you're very slender, you can actually get by because the way this slide is set from the wall about six inches. If the slide was over about a foot, you definitely could have, because if I have measured it correctly, it will come to about where my foot is, so you would have that much space to get by. So you would really need to be fairly slender to be able to get by, but it's still a very impressive unit. And I got these specifications directly from the manufacturer's website. And some things are still yet to be determined as far as the specifications, but I got all I could for you. Folks, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me today. 
and let me know if you want to see some more of these Intrepid units. I'll try to get some more next time I'm up here. Uh, this is about two hours away from my home, so uh, it's a little bit of a ride for me to get them. But uh, let me know what you thought about it. Leave some comments down below. I sure would appreciate it. Thanks for watching, folks. See y'all real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.